Good day, fellow investors. We continue with the summary of the best investing book out there. And here we have 15 ideas of where and how to look for investment opportunities. I'm sure that of the 15, you will be able to add some new tools to your investment toolkit. Let's immediately start. The first tip is that you will not find great recommendations from Wall Street. You will find good hunting places, but Wall Street or, for example, even YouTube, the incentives there are quantity, not quality. So you must always mind that. And a bullish bias, as we discussed in the previous chapters, is always there. For example, Meta stock is plunging and Wall Street rolled out downgrades after earnings. So now that it is down, downgrades follow. And if we just check Meta platforms on Seeking Alpha, by the way, if you want a 60% discount on the yearly subscription on Seeking Alpha, please check the link in the description below. And you can see here immediately Wall Street ratings here, when the stock was going up heavily, the average Wall Street rating was a strong buy. Then a little bit lower, it is still a buy, but now the targets are much lower. The average target is 166, you can see it here, but when it was 350, the average target was much, much higher and above 400. And you can see here how the targets, the recommendations follow the stock price, but usually with a lag. As the stock price starts to go higher, Wall Street is bullish and pushes its target higher and higher. But when the stock price reverts, so does Wall Street downgrade the stock. And they always lower it and lower it as it's the case for Wall Street, they are always bullish. And now that the stock is the cheapest, this is already 30% of analysts to say hold is already a huge negative for a stock. But you can see when the stock price was the highest, there were the most strong buys and just one strong sell. And now we already have more. That is Wall Street. Let's now flip the coin and Check when there are opportunities everywhere, even on Wall Street. So number two, opportunities everywhere. And that might be strange, but when there is a bear market or a crash or a crisis, practically whatever you buy is a good investment opportunity. Unfortunately, that happens only maybe once in a decade. It was so at the death of the pandemic bottom that lasted three weeks. And then if you were fast, you were okay. If not, then nothing. But last time also, whatever you bought in March of 2009 was also likely a great start. So you didn't have to think much in such specific situations. Unfortunately for us now, the average cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio of the market is at 27 which means that it is likely that 27 will likely deliver subpar returns over the long term and of course if you have lower price to earnings ratios then you can expect higher returns and practically whatever you invest in, you will do well. Of course, we did this video about China and how China is extremely cheap now, but you have to see whether you want to invest in China with all the risks where things can really go wrong if there are these geopolitical tensions increasing globally. And you have to see whether you want to take that risk or not. Let's continue with value investing niches. We have securities selling at a discount to break up or liquidation value, rate of return situations, and asset conversion opportunities. When it comes to securities selling at a discount to break up or liquidation value, you can use computer screening techniques, but you have to always check the database and always recheck into the financial statements whether the computer gave you correct data. 
I feel that that is pretty much a pre-1990s way of looking at businesses or a Benjamin Graham value investing way because now we have asset light business models. So the real value might not be reflected in the numbers that you can run through a screen. Next, we have merger arbitrage. And we discussed in the Activision analysis how you can get 23% from the time till the merger gets to a closure and how then you can play if Microsoft acquires Activision. So that there have been some new developments there, so we might even update it and add it to our YouTube portfolio. The next is complex securities. You might be very surprised, but even Seth Klarman bought Tesla convertible preferred shares four years ago. So what is a complex security? Tesla needed capital, but investors wanted reassurance to get their capital. And they said, okay, why don't you issue a bond? So if things go wrong, we own the assets. But if things go well, we can convert that bond to new shares. So that was a low risk, lower risk, let's say, way to take advantage of Tesla's stock price potential increase. And those who did that four years ago found real investment value. And then we have tender offers. So your broker might here and there tell you that you can sell your stock for a small profit or to sell to someone else and that you have to see, you have to analyze the situation and see how it fits you. Number five, we have asset conversion opportunities. Of course, when there is a bankruptcy, financial distress security, you have to see what is the real value? Why did the company go bankrupt? Seth Klarman is a specialist in that. You need to know your law, likely be also a lawyer to understand those things. Well, then we have corporate recapitalizations, again, issuing special securities. And these things are likely to become more interesting if the current market's liquidity further drops and then we have a lot of businesses that are in trouble. And I've seen already how this is a video that I made a year ago, how you must be beyond sane to buy beyond meat because of the risks of the business model. Unfortunately for those investors and many other investors in similar companies, the situation didn't develop properly or as expected. And over time, over the next few years, I'm sure there will be a lot of bankruptcy and asset conversion opportunities there. Takeouts, takeovers, special situations, or with special issues with great cherries to attract new investors. The next opportunity is to look at the NASDAQ 52-week low. And if you just go to the NASDAQ, you can see here that we have 22 52-week highs, 172 52-week lows, which means the market is in a bear market. And Amazon is also, for example, here on the list, reaching a new low. And I'll try to analyze it in the coming videos. And then we have, as I said, 172 stocks here, and even bad, bad, and beyond but be very careful with this 52 week lows stocks because if you look at bad bad and beyond it was at the 52 week low also here at 12 since then the stock is down another 67 percent so just because it hits the 52 week low it doesn't mean it is a great investment and i remember here many of you were interested in this i hope you sold because it didn't work out well. Unfortunately, it happens. Next, dividend cuts or dividend eliminations push stocks to unduly depressed levels. For example, you can see here that it isn't that straightforward that stocks often first crash and then you have the bulk of companies announcing dividend cuts and suspensions that is in a general market also here you see first crash then the cuts and then it's not that straightforward but usually 
when a company cuts a dividend, the market reacts negatively, and then especially over time, because people then, especially dividend investors, don't know why they owned it or why to own it, and then they capitulate, especially if the dividend is cut totally, or there are further issues with the company. Of course, if you follow things, then you can buy it here at 7 and sell it at 10 for a 50% increase. But that's something you have to be very careful and watch the value. However, yes, those stocks can get very, very depressed if there is a dividend cut. Number eight. Okay, something can be a bargain, but you have to always ask yourself, what's wrong with it? Because asking yourself what's wrong with it will give you more predictable investing outcomes. You have to understand what's wrong, why the stock is down, why it is a bargain, see whether it doesn't affect fundamentals, and that can be legal issues, spin-off, or for example, a big player selling stake because of other reasons like it was the case now with Activision, institutional constraints where, let's say, big IBM dividend pension funds or something like that got WBD stock and they don't know what to do with it and they have to sell it because it's too small, too illiquid or something like that. Number nine, market inefficiencies, supply and demand can temporarily be out of balance and create opportunities. Again, if you have the guts to invest in China, this is the Crane Shares China Internet ETF that is mostly formed of stocks that are owned by foreigners compared to the Shanghai Index that is in the same period down just 18%. So 18% versus 80%. That's a huge difference because of different situations, different investors, and the difference in supply versus demand and at the time. But then again, mind all the risks related to investing in China. We have also unfollowed small caps that can give these imbalances and create great opportunities, but you have to be the specialist with those small caps. Another opportunity comes from year-end tax selling, then capitulation, and then whatever, but you can find depressed stock prices that might create opportunities. Number 10, being a contrarian. Because out-of-favor securities might be undervalued, popular securities almost never are. There is no value in what the herd is buying, likely in what the herd is selling, unaware of or ignoring. That is where we have to find value. And unfortunately, by being a contrarian, you are almost always initially wrong as you go against the crowd and likely for a time you suffer paper losses. But if you know what you're doing, you simply buy more cheaper and increase your long-term returns. Also, on the other hand, the herd is always right for a time in exuberant times like the last decade, even more right and even longer. So it is very hard to be a contrarian, but the key is to assess the risk and reward based on the fundamentals. And if you can do that, you can really be a contrarian. Again, we just did this video on meta platforms and compared the valuations there with the market's darling, which is Apple, Google that is not loved that much, and meta platforms that is extremely hated. And the funny thing is that Apple now is worth more than Alphabet, Amazon, and Meta combined. And then you know, okay, unlikely that you will find a bargain with the most loved stock of them all. Number 11, the 80-20 rule. You can never have perfect knowledge of an investment, but you have to make decisions with less than complete information. The 80-20 rule says that 80% of the 
relevant information or, or of all the important information will be found in the first 20% of the time spent. More time spent on research will just give marginal gains. But in this 20%, in the first analysis, in the first key points, you will know most of what you need to know to make a reasonable investment decisions. Next, number 12, you need to have a multi sector approach when it comes to investing. Because there are many specialists, for example, in healthcare, but if they know everything about healthcare, but don't know that oil stocks are at a cyclical low and a total bargain, then it doesn't really mean much that you know all about healthcare at high valuations when you cannot compare it for absolute returns with other companies. Next, very interesting, high uncertainty equals low prices because the market hates uncertainty and the core when it comes to investing is to look for high uncertainty and low risk and then buy at prices so low that those offer a margin of safety despite incomplete information. What do I mean here? Let's say that the market is very uncertain. It is uncertain about the future growth of a company. Will it be 10% per year in the long term or 2% per year in the long term? Perhaps it is uncertain about one slower year ahead compared to other years and the market is usually myopic and extremely negative when uncertain. To give you an example of high uncertainty and low risk, I always love this example because it also shows how things change. This was 2016 and I wrote an article describing Apple as a great buy for the next 40 years because the P ratio was 10, there was 40% of cash on the balance sheet and they were doing buybacks. And as I wrote here, the dividend was there, repurchases 5% and an investor gets limited downside and that was because the market was uncertain on the iPhone cycle for the next few quarters and that's why the stock was extremely cheap. Also the market was uncertain about when will Apple get to its cash that was around the world. So there was low risk but high uncertainty and that's something we need to strive for when investing. Number 14, management incentive. You need to know the management in order to understand the potentials of an investment. Now if the management is selling their stock that is usually not relevant. They could be doing to buy a house, pay for college, pay for the divorce, whatever. However, when the management is buying the stock, not through options at zero dollars per share, but really buying the stock at the full stock market price, then you know, and if those are significant buys, they are only buying it because they think it's cheap and the sucker is going to go up. So always also watch what is the management's compensation, the focus of the management, because it will tell you a lot about what will they work on and how will they focus on the stock price or not. For example, two years ago, we discussed here on YouTube restoration hardware, which was a stock that was okay, but it was bound to go up. So I made a video here and I said, this stock is going up and it certainly went up. Why did it go up? Well, the company, the management was incentivized to push the stock price as high as possible and they used financial engineering where they issued convertible bonds to get money now, buy back shares on the market at an extreme rate and of course this reverts as we are seeing now when you issue convertible bonds, sooner or later you issue new stocks to repay those bondholders and the financial engineering simply reverts. So there was so much activity here for practically no result 
except for those that bought here or the management got incentivized to issue those. So always look, okay, if the management is incentivized to do whatever to push the stock price higher, okay, follow it, but be sure to sell at the first sign when the financial engineering reverts. All right, number 15, let me shamelessly plug in what I do because it is, yes, partly to generate investment ideas. If you check the link in the description below, you can find my research platform with my investment thesis and everything what I do there, but also the stock market investing course if you are more interested in the educational parts and here I structure the education. You can check out both and see whether you can find value there. Of course, don't forget, that's what we do on this channel. So also subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you enjoy the educational content, also the connection with the context of what's going on in the market, stock analysis, and hopefully here and there investment opportunities. Now, the conclusion can never be summarized with Seth Klarman. Investment research is the process of reducing large piles of information to manageable ones, distilling the investment wheat from the chef. There is, needless to say, a lot of chef and very little wheat. The research process itself like the factory of a manufacturing company produces no profits. The profits materialize later, often much later, when the undervaluation identified during the research process is first translated into portfolio decisions and then eventually recognized by the market. In fact, often there is no immediate buying opportunity. Today's research may be advanced preparation for tomorrow's opportunities. In any event, just as a superior sales force cannot succeed if the factory does not produce quality goods, an investment program will not long succeed if high-quality research is not performed on a continuing basis. Check my YouTube portfolio where we cover stocks here on YouTube for free to do the research and to let that research compound. Check also other set Klarman chapter summaries if you have enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.